God. You know, there's not only heroes of freedom, but there's also heroes of faith. Amen? And how many heroes of faith we got in the house today? Amen? All of us, amen, should be, could be heroes of faith. Because God, what's in us, what God has put us in, in us, and what He has equipped us to do, we can do great things for God. All right, got one guy that agrees with me. Amen. We can do great things for God. So I want to talk to you today about heroes of faith. Daniel chapter 11. Daniel 11. I want to read together and turn there if you want to. Verses 31 and 32. Daniel chapter 11. The scripture says, His forces will rise up and desecrate the temple. Daniel 11, 31 and 32. His forces will rise up and desecrate the temple fortress. They'll abolish the regular sacrifice and set up the abomination of desolation. With flattery, he will corrupt those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But the people who know their God shall be strong and take action. Read that last portion again. The people who know their God shall rise up, they'll be strong, and they will take action. I hope I'm looking at some people today that are ready to rise up and take action. Amen? Because there are people in our country today that are trying to abomish, uh, uh, make an abomination out of what we believe in. To abolish the sacrifice, the worship, Christianity, and to really to extinguish the worship of Jesus. Do you realize that today? There's a war going on. There's a culture that we live in that wants nothing less than to abolish the worship that we enjoy today. Absolutely. That is the agenda of much of our society. The scripture that they that know their God. Everybody say, know God, because you're not going to do anything if you don't know God. Come on. So the prerequisite to rising up and taking action is knowing God. Amen. Not just knowing about God, but knowing God. Having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. When we have that, and we are in communion with God, when we are in fellowship with God, look out. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the rising church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. And we can rise up, and we need to rise up. This is not for passive people. Part of the reason we are in the situation we're in because the church has been too passive. Because we have failed to stand up. Instead, we shut up. And when we shut up, other people will take the place. And we need to rise up, stand up, speak up, know God, and take action. Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. From the day of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been suffering violence, and the violent have been seizing it by force. Now, the word violent here means energetic, active people. The kingdom of heaven has been active in advancing, but there's also been people, as was in the book of Daniel, that are trying to push back on the kingdom of God to try to keep the kingdom of God advancing. But I love the, the fact that we're more than conquerors through Christ. And the promise is the gates of hell who are coming against the church shall not prevail against the church. Amen? We need to understand that. Get your head out of the sand and realize how great our God is and the power that lives within us. It's the same power that raised up Christ from the dead dwells in you. We're not defeated. If I, I did read my Bible, and guess what? We win. We win. We win. We won. That's right. And this past it, the devil is defeated. Not will be. The devil today, right now, as we speak, as we sit, the devil is a defeated foe. 
Now, his attempt, he wants to lie to you. He wants to deceive you. He's got an ability, not a power, but an ability to lie and deceive and coerce and to trick you into believing something that isn't true. That's his only, and that's his uh, uh, man of, of operation. I want to lie to you. I want to deceive you. I want to trick you. I want to take the truth, and I want to twist it and get you to believe something that's not true. And if you do that, even though he's been defeated, amen, he's a father of lies. And that's why the Bible says, Richard, where'd Richard go? Back there. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. Don't be deceived. Amen. Amen. With flattery. Another translation says, he will corrupt those who act wickedly toward the covenant. But the people who know their God will be strong. Another one says, we'll, we'll stand firm and take action. We'll stand strong and defend him. And this word, stand strong, means to fasten upon, to seize, and to be strong, and to be courageous. This is an active, energetic church. It's a church that's marching forward, amen? It's not hiding behind some pew. Let's get out them doors and rise and shine and reflect the glory of God. And greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're more than conquerors. That's not just to say it. That's not just something to make you feel good. It's the truth. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. It means to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Woo! That's who we are. Strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Our vision at Church on the Rock, a community of Christians committed to Christ, committed to His church, committed to His cause. Well, the cause of Christ is the kingdom of Christ. It's the kingdom of God, the, the, the people. That's why Jesus came. We said it earlier, to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to forgive. He came to redeem. He came to heal. Redeeming lost people, setting them free, giving them lives, and setting people's lives in order, healing them, and making them every whit whole. We have a place in that. We have a part in that. We cannot be passive, but we've got to stand, and we have to take action. I love this about our vision. An army of trained Disciples united in reaching out, impacting this area, Northeast Texas area, with God's life-changing power, with God's love, with the anointing that he's given us. The anointing is the presence of God. We're not alone. And if God don't go with us, we ain't going to go. But if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, we better go. Amen. We better rise up, saddle up, pack up, and get up and, and go in Jesus' name with the power of God in our mouth, the Word of God, the, in, our, in our heart, the purity of God in our heart, the power of God in our mouth. Army, trained disciples, united. An army, I love the, the, the army part of it, the discipline. An army is deployed. An army is disciplined. An army is on duty. Amen. They're ready to go. They're ready to go. You people that have been, you're thinking get deployed, you're ready. You're ready before you're deployed, aren't you? You're just waiting on the call. Well, God's given us the command, go ye and preach the gospel. We've been deployed. We've been delegated. We have the power. We have the authority. We just need to go. Trained. Amen. Why would, can you imagine an army that's not trained? Mm -mm. But you, so we have to take a responsibility to get trained, don't we? We need to sit before God's feet, number one, and Lord, teach me your word. The Holy Spirit is a good teacher. Teach me your word. Sitting before God, communing and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit of God, and let him download some things in your heart and in your mind. We need to be under teachers as well. God gave pastors, teachers. God gave these to the church to equip the people of God to do the work of God. And so it's your responsibility to attend class. Amen. It's your responsibility 
to, to learn, to read, to grow, and develop. Because it's an army that is trained as well. United. Well, I love the unity in the army, in the armed forces, whatever branch that you espouse to. How many army people we got? Whoop! How about the Marines? Uh-oh. We got to get some Marines. We got to get some Marines. Navy! Air Force. Whoop. Coast Guard. No Coast Guard. All right. Um, but the fact that they're all in unity. Now, they kind of play with each other a little bit and who's the best and give each other a little hard time. <laughs> we know the Army is, but that, let them others, you know. But when it comes time to fight, guess what? Whoa, they're pulling together. They are in unison. They got a job to do. The other one's got a job to do. And they are in harmony against the enemy. Amen? And that's the way the church is. I want us to pray that we will be in harmony against the enemy. That church on the rock will be in harmony with Brother Danny and First Baptist Church. Amen? Because we have the same enemy. I want us to pray that we will be in harmony with... with uh, First Methodist, uh, Brother Dan at First Methodist Church. Amen? Because we're fighting together in unity as believers in Christ against the same enemy. Now, we can talk a little bit. We have different beliefs, different uh, methods, just like the Army's different than the Navy. They've got different methods, different tactics, and all that. But they're all what? One goal. One goal, and that is defeat the enemy. Reaching out. In unity, reaching out. Not just sitting there like a knot on a log. Reaching out. Reaching out. Let me help you. Jesus, when you see the lame man, he stretched forth his hand. Peter did. He stretched forth his hand. He just said, oh, well, wish I could help you. But he said, I don't have any silver and gold, but such as I had, give I unto thee. Let me help you. I got something. I don't have everything. I can't do everything, but I can sure do something, and I'm going to do that thing, reaching out, impacting, making a difference. Hey, if we're not impact, what's an impact? Man, <clears throat> an impact. People know when you've been impacted, don't they? People know when something, I mean, and I believe that's the power of God, the Spirit of God, whether it's drug abuse, whether it's an addiction, whether it's alcohol, well, there's whatever it is, we can make changes because of God in us. It's nothing in us, but it's God in us. Amen? And we need to be making an impact, making a difference in people's lives. The situation should change as a result of His presence. And that goes with us. I'm not bragging on us. I'm not saying lift us up. But things should change because of your presence. Because of your presence in the workplace, your presence at the school, your presence. And I'm going to say something. A couple of weekends ago, Fridays ago, we had that football game between Dangerfield and Pewitt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two good teams battling it out. Great football game. Wasn't no bunch of foul play. Wasn't no bunch of junk going on. But I've been here 38 years. There used to be. I mean, it was, a, it was not a good weekend when Pewitt and Dangerfield played. I mean, as far as, I mean, the police, the sheriff's department, I mean, they was all, everybody on, everybody been warned. Stuff's going to happen. Did anything happen? Now, you know what happened? They got on the field. They got on the field after a hard-fought game between two great teams, and they prayed together. They kneeled together, and they prayed together. The Spirit of God. Yeah! You know why? Because the coaches love God. I don't know either one of them personally, but I know they love God, and I know they're doing their due and what they can, and, you know, to influence them. They're making a difference. This gentleman right here, Brother Mark, how long have you been working with a team, Mark? 13 years as chaplain 
of the football team. You think he's not making a difference? You may not see anything overnight, but God is using these people. And that's what I want to impart to you today. God can use you to make a difference. But you got to rise. First, you got to know God. That's what this is all about. Amen? It's about knowing and loving God. Don't jump out there thinking I'm going to do something just to do something. This ain't about doing something. It's about loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then out of that love, we love people. And it's that order. If you get that mixed up, you'll, get, you'll fail and you'll be frustrated. And you'll get prideful. You may do some great things. But they're not God things. Mm-mm. Our motive, hey, I want to love God and I want to serve Him. And the way we love God primarily is through loving people. Don't tell me you love God whom you haven't seen if you don't love those whom you do see. Our measure of how much we love God is how much we love each other. Isn't that amazing? God just made it simple, didn't he? Oh, you say you love me, do you? How much do you? Do you love me? Do you love that person that abused you? Do you, I don't mean, that, that did you wrong? Do you love that person that hurt you, that offended you? Our feelings towards those people is the more honest evaluation of our love for God. Impacting, making a difference. Being influential and involved. Team atmosphere. Every member, every one of us has a responsibility, has a place. And it's our responsibility as pastors and teachers and elders to, 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 to help each believer find that place. And, and to, to have them trained and, and be effective uh, in their ministry. Because this is what it's really all about. Amen? You know, one of that, those scriptures there in John chapter 2, verse 11. It's just always just jumped out at me. Just has special meaning. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory. And his disciples believed in him. We should kind of bring it all in a nutshell. What's, what's it about us loving God, knowing God, and serving God, and giving God glory? If what we're doing is not giving God glory, we need to quit. We're reflecting just like the moon reflects the light of the sun. We are to reflect the light of the sun. This was his first Miracle. The first time Jesus revealed his glory. Turning water into wine. You know, the lesson there for me is sometimes you think you've got to do something humongous for God. Do you know everything you do for God is humongous? <laughs> Jesus said, give that person a drink of water in my name. And sometimes we don't do nothing because we can't do something off the map. And then we end up doing nothing. If you're not faithful in the little things, you won't be faithful in the many. Do what you have. Do what you can with what you have and reflect the glory. What is the glory? It's the nature of God. It's the character of God. It's the grace and the love and the, all that God is. And that's who we are, reflectors of who he is. And everywhere we go, in the schoolhouse, in the workhouse, in the hospital, in the, everywhere we work and, and live and play and go, just reflecting the light of Jesus. And that way when we do good works, what? They will see your good works. And they will what? Glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Reflectors of his glory. 
manifesting his glory. Matthew 25, verses 31, 36. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, Matthew 25, 31 through 36. With all the angels with him, and then he'll sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered together in his presence, and he'll separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Verse 33, he'll place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. And then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you in the creation of the world. Verse 35, for I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me into your home. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you cared for me. I was in prison, and you visited me. And they went on, so, Lord, when did we see you thus and so? Well, when you've done it to the least of these. When you've done it to those with whom you work with and you rub shoulders with at the grocery store, at the gas station, and where you work, and at home. Thank you, Joyce, because, you know, until you're doing it right at home, just, just get that right first. Your first if you're, if you're married, husband, number one way to reflect the glory of God, don't look to serve God some way in this church. You better be the man of your house, loving God and loving that woman. Amen? Same thing with the women. <laughs> I'm not going to ask who that was. I, I, he's quick, too. But seriously, you get the point? Boy, and that soul, it's destroyed more. You know, that'll destroy marriage. Well, that husband up there working at the church, if I only knew how he lived here at the house. You know what? It, it divides the family. You know what it does? It's a sorry witness for the church. Because the kids see the dad quote, serving God. Let me tell you something. You ain't serving God if you ain't loving your wife. You ain't serving God if you're not loving your wife as Christ loved the church. Get that right. Amen. And then go to church house and love him and serve him. But the point is, what, what divided the sheep and goats? The things they did to reflect the glory of God, to reflect the nature of God. What is the nature of God? What is the character of God? It's loving people. It's meeting needs. That's why Jesus came. He came to seek and to save. He came to see the needs. And I love the story of, of, uh, of, of uh, what was it, um, Peter. Was it Peter? I don't think I wrote it in my notes. But the sinful woman was there and came to the house. The Pharisees noticed. But the woman came, and what did he do to Jesus? She ministered to him. She wiped his feet. She kissed him. The Pharisees said, huh, if, I, if I just knew who she was, hmm, if Jesus only knew. Can you imagine saying that? If Jesus only knew. Anyway, tell you how dumb and Pharisees are. If he only knew. And Peter was there. It's interesting. Jesus, looking at the woman, said, Peter, looking at the woman, Jesus said, Peter, do you see this woman? Well, don't you imagine Peter had seen the woman? Had laid eyes on the woman. But he hadn't seen the woman. Simon. Thank you. Not Peter the apostle. Thank you. Simon, do you see this woman? And that's my question to you today. As we seek to love God. Know him. Do exploits. Rise up. We got to see even, even he said, look up. Open your eyes. Look up. 
Open your eyes and see the fields. They're ripe unto harvest. What are we seeing? Oh, we see people. No, Jesus says, do you see this woman? And it's really a deep, do you, not just looking at her, but do you perceive the need? Do you see the need? It's not just a passive glance. It's a look. It's a, it, it, it's looking on purpose for a purpose. We, can't, we get so big, we're just looking, we see, oh, I see, I see, I see people. Jesus said, would you slow down? And would you see this woman? Would you see this man at work? Would you see this man you see every day? But would you see him? This woman that you see every day, would, do you see that woman? That's, I believe, what the Holy Spirit is asking us today. To look with the eyes of Christ. And you know what he does? He looks on purpose for a purpose. What's that purpose? What can I do? What can I do? We can't do everything, but I promise you, because as God has given every man a gift, so use that gift for the betterment of other people. Use it for the betterment of other people. Yes, sir. And of, of, the, of the young people, it's like 30-something percent. When you factor in just the children, school-age children, over a third are poverty. There's great needs right here. Now, we'll hear next week from missionaries. There's great needs all over. But if we will look intently and look purposefully, boy, there are needs right beside you. Right beside you. And God wants to use you to rise up, know him, and take action. Take action. Angie, can I share what you shared with me last week? Wednesday, or you want to share? Uh, you know, there's people that are doing things, and it was amazed me to, to know just briefly, and we didn't talk three minutes, about what Angie is doing to reach out and help people in, in need. Tell them real quick, Angie, if you don't mind. Yes. Six women. This is she said it's on a job, but it's not part of her job. Uh, this is just men. This is just something on the side. You know, on the side I don't mean like it's peripheral, but uh, okay. She has about six women uh, that she gets with. Uh, how, how often? On Thursdays, and minister to them. Helps them. They're battered women. They've gone through some divorce, or anyway, they've got relationship uh, mainly needs like that, and. Uh, She's teaching them practical skills. She's giving them godly counsel as well. But, and, uh, but she's looking for ways that, how can I help other women? You know what? I've, I've, I've just been so pumped and excited because I've never been, at, at least, I won't say never, but anyway, there's a, there's a lot. You know, I, I'm hearing a lot. How can I help? What can I do? And it's like, well, praise God, you know? And then Angie came, do you have a way? Is there other ladies 
that need help that I can get with. What's God put on your heart? Kay meets with ladies at lunch on Wednesday. One Wednesday a month. Fourth Wednesday. I'm sorry. First Wednesday of the month. And those women that want to come, and they just go to Hawkins, and they visit, and they share the love of God, and they help each other, talk to each other, minister to each other, pray for each other. You know, you don't have to, again, these are not just humongous things, but they're making a difference. They're making an impact. They're influencing people. Uh, Brother Mark, what he does there, you know, I, I, I'd love to take a Sunday. We might just do that. The things that people are doing that we don't know about, that I don't know about, and how people are reaching out in different ways and ministering to people. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Amen. And, and it's, a, it's, it's show and tell. It's, it's, it's not just telling. It's, it's uh, you know, remember those school show and tell? <laughs> Don't just tell them, hey, God loves you yet. No. Well, you remember what Jesus, what separated them? No, when I had this need, you met it. And it's, what say? Faith and works. Show and tell. Good news, good works. Go together like peanut butter and grape jelly. Whew. Ooh, I'm hungry. Yeah, man. I messed around, waited too long, <laughs> but I brought these sign-up sheets. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and pass them out on, on there, and you pass them out in the middle. You go, Elizabeth, pass them out in the middle. I'm Elizabeth. Oh, by the way, Elizabeth, is somebody asking. She's with her daddy. Uh, she went to Arkansas early this morning so she could have church. Be there with her daddy. Uh, does church in the nursing home. Plays that guitar and sings. And uh, so she went there. She's never been with him to church there. It's a nursing home. So, uh, and then this afternoon, they're taking him to somewhere uh, there in town. They're honoring vets. And he's the only World War II vet there in Fort Dias, Arkansas. So he's getting recognized today. And, I, you know, daughter wanted to be there. So I, absolutely, you go and worship with your daddy and sing with your daddy and and be recognized with your daddy. Amen. 90, 93, I believe. 93, I think. 93. Tear that guitar up too, man. Tear it up. Tear it up. But here's just some simple ways that you can help. And again, what I, lo what I love is, is people like Angie that are doing these things. And, and I want to hear more of that. Amen. And uh, we need to hear from David and, and what him and, and uh, uh, the Reeves Candace, <laughs> excuse me, Candace, uh, what they're doing there in the Dream Center. And uh, just, just the, the ministry, the, the glory that's being reflected. Amen? And, and who, uh, where'd she go? Who was I going to say? Was it? Well, Travis is one. They're in school. You're making a difference. Now, you may not be standing up preaching Jesus, you know, but you're showing him Jesus. You're showing them character. You're showing them integrity, and you're instilling in them responsibility and traits that are important. Making a difference, and some of them don't have nobody. Literally. Most of them, most of them, Mark will vouch for it, Travis, most of them, there's no daddy to go home to in about 80% of them's family case. Nursing home people don't have anybody. There's so many wonderful things we could do. Amen. And this sheet's just a sign. Up. I've got one for everybody. And just, just put it. And then, you know, we're going to have some training for you. If you're interested in the video booth and sound booth and, and uh, uh, helping us, we really need help. Watching our security system and uh, in our video, in our sound booth. Uh, we need a lot of help there. Need help in the nursery on Wednesday nights. Uh, Elizabeth uh, and, 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 who, and Gloria is doing it every Wednesday. 
Hey, give them a break. You know, we'll double their pay if you'll help. We'll double your pay. We'll pay you double what we're paying them. How about that? I want double. All right, sign him up. Hey! Sign him up. But seriously. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Okay. Do you know we had 85 people at church Wednesday night? This past Wednesday night. Just about every Wednesday. We're having soup and, and, and uh, cornbread and dessert this, this coming Sunday. And it, the fellowship is important. The camaraderie is important. Wednesday, Wednesday. Amen? But, but you come and join. It's, it's family. I love family. Amen? Relationships. Before we leave, go ahead and sign that up. And uh, just put it up here on the altar. Give it to Judy, whatever is convenient for you. And we got one more important thing we need to do before we leave. Joyce? Maybe two. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, so we mentioned uh, Galen and Vader's going to be here Sunday through Friday. And uh, we'll be here for teaching each evening as well uh, at 6.30. And then we'll have food. We'll have our regular 6 p.m. dinner and then 6.30 uh, teaching. Uh, that's Sunday night through Friday night. Now, and they want people to, do we have anybody that will volunteer uh, more, especially at supper? No. Wednesday night. No. 6 p.m. Wednesday, we'll have our regular supper. Just Wednesday night. Just Wednesday night. Uh, the teaching will be at 6.30. Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Supper will be in Wednesday at 6. Now, do we have any volunteers to um, do what do? Would you see Joyce, okay, to uh, sign up and take them out to dinner uh, or, or, or just have them dinner in your home, okay? Uh, Jolene, Martha, write them down there, Joyce. And, and uh, there'll be others, so they, they, it's a great opportunity for them to get to know some people. Amen. Would the sellers come on up here? And I've waited because I didn't want to do this. I was hoping they'd change their mind. <laughs> but this is their last Sunday, at least Stetson's last Sunday. Sandy will be with us. And, huh? Hey Amen. Emily, y'all come on up here. And, and uh, I cry every time I do this. Uh, but, you know, they, it's just uh, God moves people. Jobs, uh, things, and things change, and and uh, if we pray real hard, maybe they won't go. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> just joking. But uh, we, they mean a lot to us, and uh, we want them to know that, and uh, we support you, even in your leaving. <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. We do, we do. It's never easy uh, to send families off, but it's important because we don't own them anyway. Amen. Who's who they belong to? God, and so that's why it's, 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 it's a blessing in a way to send them off and pray for them as a church and speak blessings on them as they go uh, to a new job. That's primarily what it's all about. It's a great opportunity uh, dream job, right? that Stetson's got, dream job, and uh, so we are, we are rejoicing with them even as we are sorrowing on the inside. <laughs> so stand with me, church. And uh, like I say, Sandy will probably be with us a, a few more times and in the process of transition, moving. But uh, Stetson, this is his last Sunday. And uh, let's pray together for them. Can we do that? Amen. Lord Jesus, as a church, God, we thank you. Uh, thank you for transition, Lord. Thank you for change, Lord. And we thank you for the blessing of the Lord upon this precious family. Not just them, Lord, but these precious children as well. God, I thank you that you've gone before them and you have prepared the way. There's things that we know not of, uh, but God, I thank you that we can cast all of our care upon you, Lord, that you're taking care of all the details, be they great or small. Everything, Lord, we speak blessings upon them. Thanking you, God, 
for opening the door that you did and providing this opportunity and this job for them, Father. Thank you, Lord, for the home they found, Lord. Thank you for everything, God, that you placed, that you put in order. Family, friends there, church, everything, God. We thank you that they are blessed of the Lord and that they will prosper where they go. God, you give them great success, Lord, on this journey. Safety, divine protection, and divine provision for their lives and for their children. In the name of Jesus, we bless them. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, brother. Amen. Appreciate it. Amen. And mom's right here, so she probably needs prayer too, doesn't she? Amen. <laughs> and uh, her mom, excuse me, I didn't say their mom. And uh, yeah, that's his mom too. We know how that is. Yeah. But uh, we pray for them as well, extended family, because uh, I know full well we don't want to send our children off to love book. No kidding. Amen. All right. One, two, three. Hallelujah! God bless you!